So this is a 2005 movie. Got it. Uh, Thomas Jane and Harrison Ford turned down the role of Tom Stahl. Tom Stahl. Okay. The first four minutes and 28 seconds of the movie at CD Roadside Hotel is a single uninterrupted take without a single cut until Billy enters the motel office. Billy. Okay. Um... Let me see if I can find one that's a little more information for you. Oh. This movie has the distinction of being the last major Hollywood movie to be released in the VHS format. VHS was still coming out in 2005? That's the last one. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, thank you for finding that really informational one. <laughs> uh, let's see. The main actor is Viggo Mortensen. Oh, yeah. What is this? Uh, da, 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 da. Is it uh, that one? Yes. Oh, man. I can't think of what it's called, and I know it. The Revenge movie? Yes, I think. I mean, I think uh, he has a couple of because there was two that came out around the same time. Yeah, it's not the other one. One was it's not Eastern Promises. It's not Eastern Promises. Okay, so it is. Oh man, I know it. I and I've seen it. I just can't think of what it's called. Um. Hmm. I don't know what I, you'll have to tell me. History of Violence. History of Violence. Yeah. Uh, that's a good movie. Yeah. From what I remember. Yeah, it's interesting because it, um, it's kind of, this is going to be a weird comparison, but it's kind of like Breaking Bad, um, except yeah. not, but in reverse. And the way that the story is structured, the first half, maybe first third of the movie, he is, um, like real straight laced and kind and just kind of, uh, a nice person. And you find out that he has this dark past of being, was he a hitman? Uh, something like that. Some um, mobster or something, right? Yeah. And, uh, he gets like drawn back into it and has to end up protecting his family and like, but you just see his character just completely shift. Like, Vigo Mortensen plays two different characters basically in this movie. Yeah, and I, I, there, there's another movie that I want to compare it to where it's it's like that. Um, but yeah, basically his old self comes out and he goes on a rampage. What was the other movie you want to compare it to? I could not remember. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it's a weird thing to bring up and then just not finish. Yeah, I don't know a lot of things. That's true. That's one thing I've always said about you. He doesn't know a lot of things. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, I, I've only seen this movie once, and it was around when it came out. Uh, but it was a good movie. I do remember that. So, something, have you seen the movie Death Sentence? No. With Kevin Bacon. Mm-mm. It's, uh, it, it's similar in a way. Basically, it is fantastic. And Kevin Bacon is just this normal dude going about his life when his son is murdered in a gang initiation. And so he goes on this killing rampage to get revenge. Uh, it is pretty awesome. I would say one of the, I think it's a good Kevin Bacon movie. You should check it out. How do you feel about revenge movies? I love them. They are some of my favorite movies. Revenge of the Nerds, uh, Montezuma's Revenge, The Roller Coaster. Uh, I love Revenge. Is that, that sounds like a podcast. Revenge of the, revenge of the Sith. I love Revenge. <laughs> I love Revenge. Where we talk about all things Revenge. Um, uh, Ripper's Revenge is another good one. There is kind of a, uh, like a primal, 
thing, connection to revenge movies, I think. Where you have, like, this, uh, this desire to want to be the hero? Get back at somebody. Well, yeah. And, and everyone's gone through something, whether it's having your son murdered in a gang initiation or someone made some funny comment to you and you couldn't think of a good comeback in time. Everyone wants to get back. It just is, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, uh, I don't know words. It's another thing people say about me. <laughs> well, but, I- yeah, it's, it, it's, it's like a deep seated trait almost. Would you, everybody. is there someone that you would get, like to get revenge on? You, every day. <laughs> what I do. Oh, just general, uh, pretended to be my friend for 20 years. I don't, it was that, really I've, fun of me. I've never pretended to be your friend. To get into my, oh, that's right. <laughs> now I really want revenge for that comment right there. <laughs> I think I told you before, but when I was a kid, when I was in uh, first grade, I got tackled by a kid and punched in the nuts over and over. I'd love to get revenge and, on that kid. Yeah, you have talked about that. At, Save it for the Revenge podcast. Oh, I love Revenge. When is that coming out? Uh, Next week. Have we talked about Mr. Meaner on here yet? I think I brought it up last time. We haven't. I don't think so. No? I think that was a Twitter exclusive. I, I thought I brought it up. But yeah, no, we're going to start. We're starting uh, a whole podcast network. We're going to have That's I Seen That. And it's just going to be us, or no one else. Yeah, no. Uh, I seen that is going to be our movie flagship podcast. Um, what the dub is our foreign TV show <laughs> podcast? <laughs> uh, I love revenge. Is just us talking about what we want to do to people we don't like, or the roller coasters that have revenge in them. I can think of two. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Meaner, which I think is my favorite, uh, will never actually sure. happen. But is a deep dive into unsolved misdemeanor crimes. Those are the ones that that bug me. They 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 get pushed under the rug or swept under the rug so often due to these felonies. It's like, hey, misdemeanors are a crime too. Do you want to know what happened to Mister Johnson's mailbox? Tune in to Misdemeanor. What happened? You have to tune tune in. It's unsolved. We got to solve it. I need I'm you to do more like a lot of homework. Theft, not just like vandalism. Well, it's all any misdemeanor. That's we're, true. We're covering Big it all. Big or small, cover them all. <laughs> That's the tagline. I like it. Uh, what were we talking about? History, History of, of violence. violence. Yeah. Now, yeah, well, correct if I'm wrong. This is the this is the one with the scene with the coffee pot in the diner, right? Yes, I think so. Smashed some dude's face with a pot of hot coffee. Well, he also, he palm strikes a guy in the nose over and over, and you see his, the guy's nose crush and get stabbed into his brain. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that was a brutal movie. It was very brutal, and it's so slow. The first half of the movie is... It's really slow. Yeah. Um, is there also a decapitation in this movie? I'm trying to remember. I feel like there is a scene... Where he's like at a farmhouse or something like that, and then someone shows up and chops their head off. I don't remember that. Yeah, Uh, history of violence. If it comes on TV, what are you gonna do? Um, I don't know. I don't. I remember thinking it was like good, but not great. So I probably won't watch it. This is one of the movies that uh, you're okay watching once. I think. Like, I think it's yeah, a it's a good movie. Get it's everything a, out of one. Movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. I don't it's, see myself. <laughs> it's Go well ahead. shot. Um, the pacing is a little tough. I think to rewatch it, because it is so slow in the beginning, you'd be kind of hard pressed to sit through all that again. But it being so slow makes the violence in the end really pay off. Yeah, I I, th- I think it's opposite. I think I have a an easier time watching a movie that has a slow start that I've already seen before because I know that something good is coming. Whereas if you're watching it for the first time 
I'm like, I don't know if this is ever going to get better. Like, is it going to be like this the whole time? And then I wasted two hours. You never know. Yeah. I, well, I have a hard time rewatching something that is story driven. Yeah. If it's not a comedy, it's tough. Why? Well, comedies are the hardest for me to rewatch. Really? Those are the ones that I, I love to rewatch. Mm-mm. Cause they've got all the one liners. They're classics. Like Hot Rod is like the only one that I could rewatch. You know, that's funny. I was just thinking about that today for some reason. Cause I just watched it like a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. And I think that's one of the movies that when I found out that you liked it, I was so shocked. Cause I was like, I love this movie so much. This just does not seem like Alan's kind of movie. And I don't know if you remember this and I don't know if you feel the same way about it anymore, but like, as of right now, what are your thoughts on Napoleon Dynamite? Uh, I feel like I like it. I don't know. I haven't, I don't want to watch it again, but I liked it a lot when it came out. Yeah. See, that surprised me. I remember when I found out that you liked that movie, I was just like, is this real life? <laughs> this is a movie that I like that Alan also likes. It didn't seem normal. <laughs> Something was off. <laughs> no, it's a good movie. I feel like it's, it's weird. Like, Oh, and for that's sure. What, it's that's weird. what I like about it. it it's uh, I like movies that don't have to have a point to them. Sometimes they're just funny. Yeah. Um, I agree in a way. Would I, you say that John Heater is a one-hit wonder? Yes. What about, what do you think about him in like uh, Blades of Glory? Did not like Blades of Glory. You didn't like that movie? No. Um, I know we've already talked about him in Bench Warmers, and he's pretty much the same guy. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys. He he made a name for himself, and then it was impossible to break out of. <clears throat> no, well, but also maybe he's just not that good at acting. There might be that, but I think more than anything was he did something. What doing Napoleon Dynamite? He did something that was really interesting, that was outside right. the box and. You know, it kind of broke the mold of comedy movies. And then he tried to put himself back together and fit inside that box. You know what I mean? Like, he, yeah, he just went to generic comedy movies. Like he did, um, that movie with Mark Ruffalo that was, uh, Ghost of Girlfriend's Past or something like that. And that wasn't, that was awful. Um, I never saw that one. Blades of Glory. The only other ones I could see, I didn't mind him in Blades of Glory. I, I mean, it's a, it's a stupid funny movie, but I, I still think it's, it's got its high points. Um, oh, what's the other one? So there's Bench Warmers, obviously. Uh, I can't even imagine what the other ones are at this point. Is he even still doing movies? I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, let's get him on this podcast. We'll talk to him. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that he, like, somewhat of what you said, where he, Napoleon Dynamite was kind of bigger than him. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, I just feel like the ind- independent movies have so much more room to be interesting. And so, yeah. going from Napoleon Dynamite, which was so different and so weird and so goofy, then jumping into more mainstream comedy movies, it's like, oh no, this is just, he's just kind of boring. But it was because he was going into boring movies. You know what I mean? Like I, I just wonder, yeah. I wonder if he would have taken more time or to done pick it. his movies more wisely. Yeah. It maybe it would have been better for him, but I don't know. Also, I don't know if he regrets any of his choices. He might be perfectly fine with all of them. Oh, I'm sure he is. I don't think he, I don't know that, well, I mean, I can't speak for him, but I don't know that he has anything to be regretful about. It just, he, 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 he got in, he made his movies and then he left. Well, he's actually still making movies. Like consistently? I feel like now he's, he's probably in the, in the, in the right place to do independent movies again where he's still known, but he's not like, a star. Yeah. You know, he's, you don't, that, and that, that's the thing with independent films is you can't, you don't want someone who's too big for the role. Yeah. 
it's got to feel real. And I think probably at this point, he could probably do that and not only be Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, what, what has he been in? Anything uh, of note? No, not really. I didn't really notice anything. Nothing really stood out. Yeah. But, yeah he felt it, pressured to do these big movies after Napoleon Dynamite. Well, I think he, he felt pressure. I think he felt pressure to be weird. And, uh, I think that was, yeah, well, you know what I mean? Like, I think that might have well, been the Well, because problem. that's probably why he was getting calls. It was like, hey, we loved you in Napoleon Dynamite. We have this role that we think you would be great in because we saw you in Napoleon Dynamite. So this is what we need you to be. And it was just weird roles because that's what they'd seen him do. Yeah. Um, I, I, who knows? Yeah. Well, moving on, it is. You're listening to the John Heater Regret Podcast <laughs> on the Allen and Taylor Podcast Network. <laughs> uh, today is January 14th. And earlier this week, The Commuter with Liam Neeson came out. And oh, now yeah. it is time for Taylor's in-depth review of The Commuter. This is a three hour movie, right? And, and I know we spoke about That's movies impressive. like this before. It's surprising that they post it as an hour and five minutes, or 105 minutes, but it's actually three hours? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, so it's 105 minutes before the credits. Okay. And then you got like another hour or so, a little, a little over an hour of one post credit scene. Oh, wow. Basically, this movie is like 24, right? Uh-huh. Where it's shot in real time. And it's just of Liam Neeson commuting to and from work. So he's basically sitting in Los Angeles traffic yeah. on Carmageddon. And that's all it is. And it's shot real time. It's, it was, here's the great thing about it. It was filmed in one take. One take. And so is the one post, take. the post credit scene him coming back home? Yes. So the, the first one, the, the movie is him going to work. It's, it's his commute to work. Uh-huh. And then there's the credits, of course, because there's a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but actually, he's the only person that you see. And it's really just filmed on a, like, a dash cam. Oh, it's just a dash cam of him, Liam Neeson driving to work. What is his I'll job? Tell you this. Does it, they, they point it out in the movie? Here's the thing. It's open for interpretation. He's wow. wearing a tie. Okay. Just a tie. And that's really all they get. Does just he have a, a t- t- t-shirt underneath or? No t-shirt. No t-shirt. Does he have a jacket on so, or no jacket? Just a tie. He's got a jacket slumped over his passenger seat. You don't know if it's his. Okay. You don't know if he plans on putting it on that day. Like I said, open for interpretation. Yeah. Well, those are kind of the best movies. Kind of like Inception. Inception. Where, exactly. It, it's, it's up to you to decide. So is this is the Inception? An accountant? The, is this the Inception of going right. to work movies? Um, would you give it that? Yeah. That moniker? Absolutely. I would say it has earned that. Okay. So on a scale of one to five, and you can use uh, decimal points. So if you really want okay. to get into it, what would you 3. give this? 3.6. No, sorry. That, that's not fair. 4.4. Um, 4.4. 4. 4. 4. Because here's one thing. Although they're in the middle, it, it kind of does get a little slow. Yeah. Uh, a lot of him just humming. <laughs> the there there's there's a there's a point in the movie about forty minutes in yeah where he turns on the radio okay and the soundtrack is great oh what is it it's a bunch of Spice Girls <laughs> nice I'm surprised I didn't think they licensed their songs out for for big movies now but I guess they they here's the thing here's the thing all the music yeah was filmed or recorded like no they filmed live. It. And, and filmed. <laughs> so it wasn't used, it wasn't soundtrack music. Everything that you hear in the film is being played at that time. Oh wait, so it's a, it's a live recording that's concurrent. It's a live recording. So they had a... Yes. So it was a live broadcast into his truck that was being filmed live. Yes. So it's like two layers of live recording. Yeah, it's insanity. That, that's it's a, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. It sounds like it. Well, I will definitely go see this movie based on your it's, your it's review. Actually, 
it's nice. I, I don't want to spoil anything. There is a cameo by Patrick Stewart as a homeless man on the side of the road, just holding a sign. Is he Patrick Stewart, like from Logan? That type of Patrick Stewart, like old and decrepit, or? Oh yeah, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Okay. He he is essentially Professor X. Yeah. How long but is he's he got in? Just a really long beard. Is he uh, stopped? You see him for probably like. Well, here's the thing. So he <laughs> he's on the side of the road, and it gets a little tense when. Cars are moving by, cars are moving by, and Liam Neeson's like, oh, I hope I don't have to look at this guy. He hates homeless people. Yeah. And then traffic comes to a stop, and he's practically sitting next to Patrick Stewart, and he has to, without looking obvious, reach over and lock his door without Patrick Stewart knowing. Oh, he doesn't have Patrick automatic Stewart. locks? He, he can't just hit no, the button? No, Patrick Stewart hears the door lock, Ooh. and he doesn't have any lines, but you see it on his face. He feels terrible. Yeah. Does he show back up in the post credit scene or is that, was that just always Never see him again. Okay. It's, it's presumed that he dies. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. But like I said, open for interpretation. <laughs> All right. Well, if you enjoyed this podcast, if you would like to help us out, you can go over to p- Patreon slash I seen that and vote for Taylor or I. You will not only get access to all our episodes two weeks in advance, but you will help decide who has to be punished at the end of the month. Whoever has the least amount of votes will pay whatever yeah. punishment is going on for January. Or you can get a hold of us over on Twitter at I seen that pod. Um, we appreciate you listening and hope that you watch the commuter. You vote for us. <laughs> yes, watch the commuter. It is fantastic. <laughs>